Here's some of the stories trending this week at NASA. NASA announced May 26th it has selected nine science instruments for a mission to Jupiter's moon Europa to investigate whether the icy moon has conditions suitable for life. The instruments targeted for launch aboard a robotic probe in the 2020s include cameras and spectrometers to collect high-resolution imagery, an ice-penetrating radar to measure surface thickness and look for subsurface lakes, and a magnetometer to measure the strength and direction of the moon's magnetic field and allow scientists to determine the depth and salinity of the moon's ocean. The mission will collect data during a series of close flybys of Europa during a three-year period. NASA's commercial crew program ordered its first crew rotation mission from the Boeing company, moving a step closer to the agency's goal of restoring America's ability to launch astronauts to the International Space Station from the United States in 2017. SpaceX, the other company developing spacecraft to fly astronauts to and from the ISS, also is expected to receive its first order from NASA later this year. A determination of which company will fly the first crewed mission to the station will be made at a later time. Work was completed on May 27th to relocate the International Space Station's permanent multi-purpose module from the Earth-facing port of the Unity module to the forward port of the Tranquility module. The module move is part of the process of reconfiguring the station for the future arrival of U.S. commercial crew spacecraft. NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden visited Aerojet Rocketdyne's facility in Southern California on May 28th. While there, Bolden was briefed on work being conducted by the company on the propulsion system for NASA's Space Launch System rocket and Orion spacecraft. That same day, the administrator also visited the nearby headquarters of Northrop Grumman Aerospace Systems, where parts of NASA's James Webb Space Telescope are in production. Engineers at Stennis Space Center conducted a 450-second test of an RS-25 engine on the A-1 test stand. Four RS-25 engines will power the Space Launch System rocket. This was the second in the current series of test firings to investigate how the RS-25 stands up to the rigors and specific requirements needed to boost the massive SLS core stage. Six more tests are planned for the current cycle of development. The second flight test of NASA's low-density supersonic decelerator project is scheduled for no earlier than June 2nd from the U.S. Navy's Pacific Missile Range facility in Hawaii. The test, which simulates a supersonic entry and descent through the Martian atmosphere, is helping researchers investigate breakthrough technologies for landing future robotic and human Mars missions and safely returning large payloads to Earth. NASA Chief Scientist Ellen Stofan was one of several agency representatives at the 2015 World Science Festival in New York. The festival also included a host of interactive NASA activities and exhibits showcasing the science and technology that will enable future groundbreaking discoveries and human journeys to faraway destinations in our solar system, including Mars. And that's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on social media and visit www.nasa.gov twan.